Hello everyone, it's Frank again with a new budget mud truck video. If you've been a fan of my channel for a while, or if you just look at my channel's videos, then you know that my most popular video was making the cheap lift for the budget mud truck. That was over a year ago, and the budget mud truck was still on the stock 1500 axles. So it's about time for a new lift, and this time we're going much bigger. So today we begin a new series of videos, building the new cheap lift for the budget mud truck. This lift will require some fabrication and won't be as cheap as the original. However, it's going to be a much bigger lift. Now, specifically talking about this video, we're just going to explain how a lift works on this type of truck and what it is that we're going to need to actually build this lift. This video contains a whole lot of talking and no building whatsoever. You can say this is more like a general overview of what the next few videos in this series will be about. So if you're saying, I know how a lift works, I don't need to watch this shit, you should probably skip this video and just watch the next few where I actually build the lift. Also, I'm going to keep saying build, even though really I'm only building maybe one or two parts of this actual lift. But since there is a little bit of fabrication, I'm just going to call it a build, even though most of it's bought. It just sounds better when you say build. But enough about that, let's get into the actual video. The budget mud truck is a 2000 Dodge Ram 1500 with the one ton axles off of a 1997 Dodge Ram 3500. The front axle is basically held in its spot by four control arms, two on each side and one track bar. The control arms control it going up and down, track bar controls the left to right movement. The actual suspension bits in the front are just the coils and the shocks. So technically in order to lift it, you just need new coils and new shocks. But depending how far up you lift it, is when other issues come into play. Your steering linkage will be completely out of whack, your track bar and sway bar will most likely not reach, and most importantly, your control arms will be too short. When your control arms are too short, your axle will be off-center in the wheel well. The whole purpose of the control arms is so your front axle stays centered in the wheel well, no matter how flexed or unflexed your suspension is. When your control arms are too short, it will cause the axle to move front and back depending on how extended your suspension is. Because of this, most larger lifts for these style trucks have to do something about the control arm. That's what it means when you see kits that say long arm kits. And that's usually why they're more expensive. Now, there's a lot of options when it comes to this. You can get longer control arms that kind of go into the same spot on the axle and move a little bit further back in the chassis. Or you could get longer control arms that go into the same spot in the chassis and into the same spot in the axle. Some kits even get rid of the control arms altogether and make it just one big radius arm similar to what Fords have. Now if you really want to get crazy, you can do like the rock crawlers do and do a three link or four link suspension and completely get rid of the control arms and the track bar too. Once the control arm situation is handled, everything else in the front is pretty easy. Track bar, you can just get a drop bracket or a longer track bar. Sway bar, you can get longer end links. And the steering linkage, you can just get a longer pitman arm with a bigger drop on it. Obviously, this all depends on how big of a lift you put in, though. Because if you go too high, you may end up having to go hydro steer. But again, this is the budget mud truck, and I don't think anything with hydro steer can be considered budget in any way. And that is all there is to a lift in the front of this truck. Now, we talk about the easy part, the rear end. The rear end on this truck is leaf springs. Leaf springs are the easiest form of suspension I have ever seen. There's no control arms, there's nothing, just the leaf spring and a shock, nothing else. You have four options when it comes to leaf springs. Option number one, swap out the leaf spring itself. Very simple, you just switch it for a leaf spring that gives you more lift. Option number two, you get lift blocks, similar to what I have right now. To block you put on top of the leaf spring, it lifts up the truck a little bit. And option number three, change where the leaf spring mounts onto the chassis. Most people do this by doing a shackle flip. And finally, option number four, which is add a leaf. Add a leaves are basically an extra leaf spring you put on top of your pack of leaf springs, which makes it a little bit stiffer and gives you some lift. And that's all there is to it. That's all you need to do to lift up this type of truck. Now, this is just a general overview, and I'll probably go way more into depth in each section when I actually do that part in that specific video. But I wanted to put this out there so people have a general understanding. A lot of people don't understand how these things work. I am in no way an expert in this, but I have seen a lot of YouTube videos and read a lot of forum posts about it. So I hope you guys enjoy this new series of videos, and I hope you liked this video. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.